You take a deep breath. If Alibaba stays awake, he'll surely witness their nightmares. He would know. And he would be left vulnerable before the spy master. You can only hope for him to become exhausted and eventually fall asleep himself. You continue to reassure yourself, going through these sleeping methods that you've used a hundred times over. As the night passes, you find yourself unable to sleep despite the exhaustion that still makes your body heavy. I knock had mind to fall asleep. Now you watch the ceiling in agony. You play with the thought of getting up and walking around, but you remember Alibaba is standing guard. Please, just let me sleep, you think. Shutting your eyes tightly and waiting for the bliss of sleep to take you away from this torture. Dia? The voice beckons to you. And you whip your head around, trying to look for the speaker. You are met still darkness in a silent, slumbering room. You lay your head back down, wondering if the others had heard it too. Dia? The voice is now directly by your ear. You attempt to set up, but your body has been seized by fear, leaving you immobile. You choke on your fear. Your voice is lost deep in the depth of terror. The voice calling to you laughs in a low, rumbling tone like scrabbling gravel. Somebody please wake up! The voice begins to speak louder. It's tone venomous as a chant in your ear. It's not the usual static-like voice that haunts your dream. It is clear, despite speaking in a language you cannot comprehend. You feel the mattress beneath you shift as the neck reaches for you, placing a warm hand on your arm. She says something beneath her breath, and you immediately feel relief. The invisible chains that bind you slip away, allowing you to sit up straight in the bed. In the dim light, you see the looks of concern on X's face. Alibaba's green eyes gaze at you from where he stands at the edge of the bed. You feel Anak's hand slip down along of her body as she meets the pillow and promptly falls back to sleep. The spymaster kneels to your seated height, head canting to the side in a bird-like manner. Is he scrutinizing you? Analyzing you? Does this further incriminate you? Questions buzz in your head as you continue to look back at him. To your surprise, his eyes relax. Instead of suspicion, there is concern. His hand reaches for you but hesitates Smith's air. Finally, he places it on your arm. Dia, are you okay? You swallow your fear and nod. Your voice strains as you speak. I'm fine. You don't hide your discomfort or fear. The voice has been right by your ear, speaking to you. It wasn't a vision or a dream. It was real. Alibaba's hand trails down to grab yours. He cups your hand between his, and you watch the way his green eyes soften. Okay, this could be a ploy. <laughs> Look, I've dealt with spies before, alright? Two can play this game. They're so familiar, so comforting, but you can't figure out why. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm here now. And I won't be leaving you, I promise. I don't know what to think about that, because that implies that he does know already who you are. I mean, most likely. He's also a spy with this ordained job <laughs> to make sure that I'm not the one who tried to assassinate the queen. You place your head on your pillow and close your eyes. You feel Alibaba's presence linger until it's somewhat gone. Not entirely, but not by the side of their bed anymore, either. Exhaustion takes you, and slowly you drift off to sleep. Sunlight pours into the room, reflecting off of the alabaster walls to create a warm glow. Your eyes slowly open as you register the warmth of another body by you. Across from you, Anax sleeps peacefully. I was pr pronouncing her name wrong! Across from you, Anka sleeps peacefully. The light from the window frames her and creates a halo around her head. You can't help but smile at the sight. She seems so at peace. You slowly rise from the bed, as not to wake the princess. The room is empty, void of your guard that had stayed with you throughout the night. Anxiety begins to rise in your chest. Did they go off to tell Noor about what you had heard? Does this incriminate you further? Everything will be fine, you tell yourself, but it's hard to believe. <laughs> what else can you do? Taking direct action, you decide to distract yourself by exploring the room. 
The drawers and closet contain clothes made of fine imported silks, furs, neatly put away. And the key to a jewelry box you seem must be holding precious gems. Guess the Empress could spare these items if they were stolen. Well, if anyone was ever brave enough to steal from her. The reminder of the Empress brings you back to last night, the pure raw fear in her eyes as she looked to you. There was no anger, no indifference, just fear. Her fear in that moment has been burned into your mind. It was almost like she was calling out for you. Or... the voices. Could she hear them too? Good morning! Before you can finish your thought, the double doors slam open. At the entrance stands Sidbad. <sighs> Fresh as ever. And behind him, Alibaba, who was less impressed with the grand display. Wow. A small shriek sounds from beneath the blankets, and then a thud as Anka hits the floor. There is a dragged out groan as she pulls herself to her feet. Oh. Oh, my apologies, princess. I was simply excited to start a new day with our new guests. We are prisoners. <laughs> Anka continues to rub her head, her confusion written on her face. Guess. I thought we were being interrogated. Ow. Oh. Alibaba takes a step forward, placing a hand on the shoulder of his enthusiastic companion. Sinbad continues to smile, wide and bright. Yes and no. Princess, you are free to sp <laughs> What? You are free to spend the day with Sinbad. We'll have a wonderful time. I'll show you all the wonders the palace has to offer. Before Anka can protest, the champion has swooped her up from the ground and carries her out the room like a bride's bee. That poor woman. W wait I didn't even get to change! Sinbad's laughter slowly fades into the distance, and you are met with the ominous silence of the room. It had been nice to be distracted from your imposing thoughts, no matter how fleeting. Something on your mind? <laughs> now is not a time to be flirting. This is where my interrogation starts. The spymaster has soundlessly taken a seat on one of the many velvet cushions in the room. His long legs play out across the floor, his body completely relaxed despite his intention to interrogate you. See, that's how it works. Intimidation is key. I told you, I've worked with spies before. Either he didn't see you as a threat, or he's just messing with you. Then again, it could be both. Why did you say that I was a suspect? And I'm not supposed to do my job? His tone seems hurt, but he doesn't move from his lounging pose. You were the last one seen with her. Before she fell, she looked to you. Care to explain? I bumped into her. <laughs> All you know is that you can't trust the spy master. You can't trust anyone with your secrets, especially not now. Not while you're being accused of murder and treason. Perhaps the truth will reveal itself later, but not right now. I don't know why she did that. If I knew, then I'd have you clear my name right now. A low laugh creeps from beneath his mask. He stands from the cushions, stretching his body. You can't help but watch how his hands easily reach- Wait, what? Your eyes drifting across him. Help, help, wait. <laughs> So basically you're checking him out. Resting his hands on his hips, he shrugs. Very well. What? Really? He came up that quickly? Then am I allowed to go? Looking at his eyes behind the mask, you can see him smile. Mischief dances in the light of his green eyes, the way someone looks when they've outsmarted another. He approaches you, his gait nonchalant and smooth. He's so close to you. You can smell the myrrh on him, and you can see the different shades of blue and green that sparkle in his eyes. They're mesmerizing, even if they're boring into you. Now, Zizan wants blood, my dear Dia, and we will have it. He pats your cheek, <laughs> taking a step back from you. His tone abruptly changes. So when you're done lying and wasting my time, let's talk and figure this out. He raises his index finger, saying one last thing before taking his leave. You have one week to tell me the truth, 
Wow, that's pretty generous, actually. <laughs> After Alibaba has left you, you collapse onto the bed. Curling up, you wrap the elegant silks around your body to comfort you. My horrible prison. You have experienced your fair share of struggle, and you had hoped by the time you reached this age, you would no longer have to deal with the turmoils of life. Your mind begins to wander back to where it had strayed before Sinbad and Alibaba had burst into the room, Ifrita's face before she fell, and the way she looked at you. She must have heard the voices as well, but you couldn't be sure. The impress was taken away immediately, you doubt you can just simply go up and speak to her. Questions flood your head to the brink, an overwhelming feeling nearly suffocating. It feels like being thrown into the middle of the ocean and expecting to swim to shore. And try as you might to swim, creatures grab at your ankles and try to drown you. You suddenly hear a knock on the door. You sit up from your bed, hesitant to respond. If it was Sinbad, he would just walk right in. Alibaba as well. Perhaps... And who is it? It's me, Nor. May I come in? You curse beneath your breath. Sigh. You finally respond. Yes. The door opens slowly, revealing the general. She doesn't step past the door frame, but even from here you can see the exhaustion beneath her eyes. Her blouse is covered in wrinkles, as if she slept in it. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Noticing you staring. She brushes a strand of hair behind her ear, her ears flushing red. My apologies if I interrupted you, Dia. We are having chai in the courtyard, and I was wondering if you'd like to join us? Wow, that's actually pretty interesting. I've been craving chai all day. An invitation to chai? One champion treats you like a prisoner, while the other two treats you like a guest. You aren't sure how to behave in this confusing maze-like situation. Would it not be inappropriate considering that I'm a prisoner and a suspect? Nor flinches at your boldness, but returns to her normal stoic nature. Perhaps I am naive, or hopeful, but I don't believe you're the one who did that to the Empress. Alibaba told me about the snakes from the night before. It does not seem like something within your capabilities. I guess they could see it as that. I would have taken it like someone was trying to assassinate me, but they could see it as I was trying to assassinate my guards. I am hoping for us to solve this together, Dia. As a team, I'm sure we can work better and faster. You feel a wave of relief when she speaks her thoughts. It is nice to know that she doesn't see you as a criminal and doesn't intend to treat you one. Treat you like one. But the spy master came to interrogate me just this morning. Does he still think I did it? Nora's laughter catches you off guard, but it's a lighthearted sound that holds no animosity. Her laughter is a cool sea breeze on a hot summer day. Even after her giggling stops, she continues to smile. He's simply trying to find out what's going on since he's as confused as all of us, which causes him a great deal of frustration. He's the one who always knows what's happening, and now he's in the dark. Her face becomes stern, a frown tugging at the corners of her lips. That doesn't give him the right to intimidate you but I do ask to excuse him this one time. I'm sure he feels as cornered as you are right now. There is a lot of pressure put on him. <sighs> I could imagine. More than Sinbad or I. You talk about him like you know him very well, which is shocking considering his demeanor. Alibaba and I have met before. We lived with one another when we were sailors on a pirate ship. Pirate, you raise your brow. You didn't take the stoic general for a swashbuckling pirate. I can kind of see it. She laughs when she sees your expression, leaning her shoulder on the door frame. Ooh, yes, I know. I don't seem the pirate type, but I was a teenager with an insatiable hunger to see the world. Plus, I was a damn good swordsman. I still am. Which is probably why you're a general. 